Good evening and welcome to another vlog. Uh, it's the first time I've been at one of these for a long, long while, an airport. Port card vlog uh, this weekend, so flying down from Amsterdam. That was the best flights I could get. Um, and not quite on a private jet, but uh, on this teeny tiny little hop plane. We'll be like trying to, I'll probably have to pedal the plane to make it fly. Um, so yeah, let's jump down to Port card where hopefully it's warmer, sunnier and nicer weather and uh, get into round two of GT World Challenge 2021. Fast forward now to the circuit and we're literally just about to go out for free practice. Um, it is three minutes to go until the start of the session. All the cars are lined up. It looks pretty spectacular, I must admit. And it really is the calm before the storm. It's very quiet. And in three minutes, all hell's gonna break loose. Uh, quite warm uh, conditions, 21 degrees at the moment. Bit of cloud cover, which is actually probably a nice thing, uh, especially this time of day. Um, where it should normally be the warmest. So yeah, let's see how free practice one goes. Um, yeah, looking forward to this track uh, with this car combination and with my teammates as well. Gonna be a good weekend. underway. This is the exciting thing about the six hour thousand kilometer here at Port Ricard into the night. So we obviously need to get our practice in. It is currently just before half past nine. So it's yeah because we're so south it's so light. So yeah it's pretty nice. Uh, good day so far. I think the car's quick. Car, I think the car's competitive. So fingers crossed. Uh, this is setting us up for a good weekend, so nice. So good morning from Saturday morning here at Port Ricard. Uh, yesterday evening was a late finish in the end. Uh, we didn't get back, we didn't check into the hotel till about 12 o'clock. So it was a long, long day yesterday. Um, starting with filming for Fanatec, doing some stuff for them in the morning. David Pittard, just how cool is this partnership between Fanatec and BMW. Yeah, I don't think any other manufacturer can offer a real life wheel that's used in their latest higher spec GT car that you can use on your sim as well. Now you're positioning, especially out of this final corner because it's a, a big drag race to the line now to complete the lap. And the two laps within two tenths of a second of each other, again displaying the quality of a set of Corsa Competizione. Uh, and then finishing night practice at about quarter to 11, I think it was. And then... <laughs>
time we've done debriefs and set the plan for uh, today. Yeah, we're, it was half 11, half hour trip to the hotel. And yeah, just uh, in bed after midnight. Uh, we then had to leave just before nine uh, to get here. Qualifying is at quarter to 11. Um, three qualifying sessions. So yeah, let's see how it goes. A little bit warmer than it was yesterday. This morning, more sunlight. So we'll see that, how that affects us for quali. Uh, then we've got the eSports race later on in the middle of the day. And then obviously the thousand kilometer, uh, six hour race in the evening. So yeah, it's gonna be a pretty action tracked, busy day. Race finishes at midnight. So I don't see us getting back to the hotel before two o'clock in the morning, easy peasy. So yeah, busy day, let's go. So overall qualifying, uh, unfortunately, well, certainly from my perspective, didn't go our way. However, we still end up P5 on the 47 car grid. So uh, we're right in the mix, right where we need to be to, to fight from the beginning of the thousand kilometer race. Um, Sheldon topped Q1 with the fastest time, which was mega. Uh, Marco was then P4, I want to say, or P, yeah, P4 in session two, which put us still on pole um, on combined times going into Q3 and then my Q3 was unfortunately pretty terrible uh, as the temperatures got warmer the M6 kind of got a bit slower really so both the cars suffered from showing really good at the beginning of the session and then by the end of the session yeah uh, unfortunately not so good and with it being so close in the GT World Challenge Championship uh, literally every hundredth of a second counts if we were four thousandths faster four thousandths of a second faster on average times, we would have been P2, not P5. So I'm a little bit disappointed with that uh, from my my perspective. So um, yeah, still P5, good place to start. I'll be starting the race. Uh, in a couple of hours time, we've now got the sim race. So I invested in a new digital motorsport sim with poison valve pedals and direct drive wheel, sim lab rig in the hope that I could get a little bit better at sim driving and hoping that I was going to translate to Paul Ricard. Um, I only finished building the sim two days before I left for uh, Paul Ricard so I was still a little bit on the back foot but um, was in a better position than I was for Monza anyways. So the first race started qualifying wasn't that much better than uh, Monza. I qualified down in 17th uh, but yeah I was hoping to take advantage of some of the carnage to make my way up into a decent position and obviously turn one pull the card carnage ensued and I was able to make a few positions up however nine minutes into the race a very strange thing happened we had a big server crash so um, there was a big downtime and then they restarted the race with only 45 minutes on the clock instead of the full hour which will which added to the confusion as well. So there you can see the rigs that we're using, the Fanatec DD2 wheel um, with one of the new um, rigs and Fanatec everything, Fanatec V3 pedals with the brake booster kit and the wraparound screen as well. Then at the second restart, with now only 45 minutes on the clock, and starting 19th, I made up some more places from the carnage as well as expected. Uh, then I got wiped out at the end of turn one, uh, lap one. So you can see I, made, I was up to 11th place after lap one, which was mega, but now you can just see me dropping way down, having been wiped out. So yeah, that was pretty frustrating, but yeah, that's sim racing for you. However, I was determined to make a good comeback. Another one making progress. Did I tell you David Pittard was in the top 10? Well, he is, and he's close. And to eventually, uh, by the end of the 45 minute race, I finished ninth on the road, but you'll see there's two penalties for Junker Dea and Caroli in fourth and sixth positions, which actually bumped me up into seventh position. And I've got so a podium. So, top three David Pittard, Arthur Rouget, and Kelvin van der Linde. Do we have David here? However, I didn't know I had a podium, so hence uh, Ben Constantiris's. Confusion when he and couldn't in third find position, me. at least on my list, is the BMW of David Pittard, who disappeared. Didn't think he actually got himself a podium, but uh, third position. So with a new sim and a bit of luck, I managed to bag a podium, a cool trophy and a cool check as well. And then ex very shortly after the sim race, it was chance to eat, drink, rehydrate and get ready for the start of the six hours, of which I would start the race from fifth position. 
tactics and back in with all of the traffic around them who are in jeopardy for the first few corners. We get set, we're going to go racing. We're just before six o'clock local time. The lights go green, we go racing. Who's going to make the best start? Will it be Bortolotti? Yes, yes, yes. The Lamborghini storms clear into the race lead. And look at Vincent Abril in the pink Mercedes up the inside line. He's going to go second, is he? Under attack is Davidi Rigon round the outside line, tries to go 88 Mercedes as well. You're on board with the number 54 Dynamic Porsche as they turn through for the first time. So far, so good. One or two run wide and off the racetrack, John, but we've got through so far without damage. Very well done by the bulk of the field. A couple of cars took the shortcut coming through the first of the S's, which they're seeing likewise down at that first of the chicane. The de, de, de la Verrière now at the bottom. Ben Abril is third there. Number 34 is David Pittard. And although we keep perhaps labelling him as a, a Nordschleifer expert these days, uh, he lives in Germany and does a lot of his racing around the uh, German circuit. David Pittard is uh, a much underrated driver, member of the British Racing Drivers Club, and uh, has acquitted himself really well with the Valkenhorst team. And it's good to have him on this platform. And not only that, but running in the leading group. It was pretty awesome to be running with such good pace at the front of a GT World Challenge event. I've watched the Blank Plan Endurance Series for years, so to run with all these front boys that have been there for years and years was a great experience. It was one of the highlights of 2021. So with this being a six hour race, we would be double stinting throughout and the Vulcanhorst team did a mega job in the pits. You can see that we came in behind the Ferrari and just at the first shot there, you saw the BMW flash out in front of it. So we managed to jump the Ferrari in the pits. So we started fifth uh, and then after the first round of pit stops, we got second on the road, which was a mega place to be. Second look is David Pittard in the BMW. Third, David Rigon. Fourth, right up behind him is Martin Tomczyk. El Bamba is fifth and it's Jules Gounon in sixth place, but it's an eight second advantage now Mapelli has over Pittard. Now the number two Mercedes, which is now Oliver Grot's 32nd, is the next car that David Pittard has got to get past and he's easily through, unlike poor old Chris Frogger that took an age to get by. Right, Pittard is in, Rigon is in, Bamba is in, the top three all in at the end of lap 65. So after pushing my drive time of two hours and nine minutes to the absolute limit, we boxed from the lead of the race, which was mega, to then hand over to Marco Whitman, uh, to then hand over to Sheldon van der Linde to finish off the final double stint to the end of the race. It was another race of the pit stops again between the Vulcan Horse team and the Iron Lynx team, but again the Vulcan Horse boys absolutely smashed it and we came out ahead, second on the road again, ready to close down the gap to the Lamborghini. Windscreen tear off, so all of a sudden things are absolutely as clear as gin. So the 71 Iron Lynx Ferrari rumbles down the pit lane. So after the double stint, this is what it looks like in the pit garages of Paul Ricard. Um, lots of water, lots of food to get some energy back in uh, and recover after that two hour stint. It was pretty physical. So then, with a busy day done, as a sports car racing fan, it was a pleasure to watch the cars driving into the night and my car in a competitive position. Enjoy. Then came a curveball with just under two hours to go, the one and only safety car of the race for a stopped Mercedes on the exit of the scene corner here. Uh, wasn't a bad thing for us, wasn't a good thing for us. Uh, we obviously closed the gap to the Lamborghini that was looking strong. Marco was flying, which was really good, so it really put us in a position to fight for the lead of the race. However, the big gap that we built up to the rest of the field behind 
um, was instantly closed down as well. So it was probably a little bit more of a loss than it was a gain because, yeah, we came quite closer to the leaders, but um, a lot of cars came a lot closer to the end. So it was all to fight for in the final couple of hours. What, two cars? Not been Green been flag. Van der Linde has got two cars between himself. And have a look, Van der Linde in the second place. BMW, now that car very much, I was going to say back of the races, it's never really been away, has it? It's always been in that leading pack from David Pittard's efforts and then Marco Wittmann. So van der Linde now in for the final double stint and he's taking the fight to Andrea Calderelli, but he's also taking with him Matt Campbell. Still anybody's race this. Yeah, Matt Campbell. So in the cooling conditions at the end of the race, we found that we were dropping pace versus the cars around us. We thought that the cooler conditions would help our turbos, and then we got driven into by a Ferrari, which gave them damage, but also at the final pit stop gave us damage as well. Was a bonnet on the BMW slightly ajar? It is. It was an extended stop at the final stop for us, um, which we lost over a minute at uh, to try and secure the bonnet uh, to make the rest of the race. We then got blocked by the car ahead, then unfortunately Sheldon stalled. Uh, so yeah, it was a little bit of a disaster pit stop and a disaster end to the race, which was a big, big shame. However, we were still running in the top 10 and ran to the end of the race. that is the end of the six hour race in a less than pretty looking m6 um yeah in the end p8 i think normally we'd probably be quite um happy with that but given how well this beginning of the race went for both the cars um we were really hoping for more unfortunately so um yeah, we were running in in the top three for pretty much well for five of the six hours uh, hour we had contact with the ferrari which dislodged the bonnet and then we lost about 50 seconds in the pit stop uh putting the bonnet or securing the bonnet properly with a lot of tape then we had to push back because the the car in front of us was blocking our exit then we stalled so yeah it was a shame we decided to stay out which was good decision because we scored some championship points in the end so we got some points on the board and uh, yeah so yeah everyone's very disappointed we had ran such a good race for five of the six hours and so yeah it was a shame for it to end how it did however i think it's been a pretty good showing for the car and team again i hope that this pace translates into the spa 24 hours uh in a couple of months time now in july so yeah, let's uh, let's see what happens. So yeah, big thanks to the team, big thanks to the teammates as well. Another mega job. Um, so yeah, didn't really film too much of this weekend, unfortunately. Yeah, really just trying to focus on the job, and it's been a pretty condensed and busy weekend. So yeah, hopefully I can do a bit more for next time, anyways. So yeah, if you like this video, please make sure you give it a like, add a comment down if you want to see uh, for something else you want to see, and um, yeah, we'll catch up next time. Until next time, bis down.